The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome back to the Ram with Coach Gately alongside Dominic Capone. Emmanuel Barbari. Dom, it's pretty crazy. Last time mm -hmm. previewing the A10 tournament, this time with hardware. Yes, we have the two trophies here. The A10 regular season championship, the first time in program history, and then obviously the A10 tournament championship. 25 and 9, two seven plus game winning streaks for this team. What a season it was. What a season. Came to an end in the NCAA tournament at Syracuse, but a pretty crazy ride in that Atlantic 10 tournament. Mm -hmm. Beat UMass, dominated Duquesne, and then the win over first seed at VCU. Yeah, the first seed, VCU versus the second seed, Fordham, they both won the co A 10 regular season champs. Obviously, VCU beat them in the regular season, but Fordham comes back, beats them in the championship, and first team, uh, all A 10 Terrell Reed, 4.04 from the field. Being that this is a season recap episode, the season has come to an end. We have a lot to get to mm -hmm. with Coach today. So we'll break down the season that has been. We'll get to the players as well. We'll get to all of that and more. First, our Looking Back segment. Well, we're back. We have our trophies, and we also have Coach in the building. Coach, this has to be nice. Uh, you, you, you got a little something to do the you show with this time. You're one of the best looking guys. Ever <laughs> <seen>. <laughs> Coach, first time ever in your career that you have two of these, okay. regular season and a tournament championship. What's your initial reaction to having both? For I'm the first saying time? like it's been so surreal. Like I don't think it'll hit me for a while, just because when you're in, when you're in that moment and you win the conference tournament. And then you, you know, like we were just kind of celebrating. And then we went, to, you know, to Barclays and were able to be celebrated again at the men's tournament. And then we obviously had the, the kids throw some, throw some cheese. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. Um, and then obviously culminated in going to Syracuse. So I really think once I have some time to kind of sit back and reflect, I'll realize all the, you know, awesome things that we were able to, and unbelievable memories that we created this year. Now, do these have a home in the basketball offices at Fordham? When you walk by, you see them, you're like, yes, we did that. <laughs> the other day, I took a picture, and then yeah. I tweeted it out saying, oh, my gosh, like, this really <laughs> happened, because this one just arrived. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, you know, when I look at it, we actually were talking about that. Where do we put them? So we obviously are going to try to create a spot for them, but it's a nice problem to have. You mentioned with the two trophies comes some additional attention. You get to go on Jimmy Fallon's show. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Seemed like it was a fan suggestion that kind of turned into your team throwing cheese at a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was play. weird. It was like uh, Abigail got an email. I think they wanted to include, they had done the Atlantic 10 men's tournament with the mascots, and I think they wanted to include the women in the NCAA tournament, so it, we were one of the schools they reached out to. And, of course, I'm, like, all game for anything, so I'm like, yes, let's do <laughs> it. And, I mean, I thought it was a great experience for our kids, and, you know, they were terrific with it. Jimmy was awesome. Their whole staff was great. I couldn't have asked for anything more. I've seen a couple back and forths between you and Jimmy on Twitter. How's that going? <laughs> I don't know if it's really Jimmy, but, you know, I'm kind of yeah, excited right. if it is Jimmy. <laughs> you know, uh, it was great. I mean, he was. I didn't really have a chance to spend any time with him, but the kids said he was really nice mm -hmm. to deal with. And, you know, just seeing, just sitting in the audience as they were, you know, going over it, it he seemed, you know, very easy to deal with. This is something you've been working towards all season, an Atlantic 10 title, and getting that accomplishment and then getting that additional attention, whether it be Jimmy Fallon, whether it be ESPN playing you guys dancing in the Rose Hill gym, mm -hmm. how cool is it to see that kind of rewarded in that fashion? Well, I think any time you can give Fordham exposure, it's great, and give your kids exposure. I mean, we we were fortunate to be on, a lot, on TV a lot this year with our games, and I think any time you're able to get the Fordham brand out there is, is fascinating. And I think, you know, for our kids, it's, you know, it, we had a great brand. I mean, it was the best chemistry since I've been here, and, and it was such a wonderful group to coach that – I was just so happy for them to get these moments. These are moments. I, I think somebody said that maybe it was Shiro, who used to be the, uh, you know, the Flyers coach back in the mm -hmm. moment, like, you know, win today and you walk together forever. Wow, you know, that's and very it's deep. really, really true. Yeah, it, it's, and I thought about that. I actually put it in my notes, like, wow, that's, that's a really unbelievable statement. Win today and we walk together forever. Like, these are memories you're always going to carry forever. Was that a message during the Atlantic 10 tournament? You go there, you need three wins to get to your ultimate goal. 
especially when you got to that Duquesne game and it seemed the team was just on an ultimate mission. Were you preaching that in the locker room? You win these games, you're going to remember this. You know what? We didn't want to put the added pressure on. Like, even while we were heading towards the end, I think you and I talked, we both all talked about the regular season. Like, the kids knew it was at stake. You really didn't have to talk about it a lot. And I didn't want to go in and say, we need to do this to win this. You know, it was more of like we stayed true to our typical win the battles to win the war. And if we out-rebound them, out-hustle them, out-tough them, you know, we have a better chance of winning the game. And fortunately, in that tournament, we picked our best time to shoot the ball well. And I said all along, like, if we can combine our defense with <laughs> shooting well, we're going to be a really tough out. And that all culminated in the Atlanta tournament. Speaking of the Duquesne game, at one point up 44-9, to nine, how does your coaching differ in that game? Like, as the game goes on, if there's a missed box out or a missed opportunity to get a rebound, do you still go in, are you still going hard at those players? Yeah, there's no at that point, because you got to continue to teach the right way because mm. you don't want any let-ups. And that was one of our problems that we had that we actually – I give all the credit to the kids improved on the end of the year because if you go back to the original VCU game and the Davidson game, we let those leads go. <laughs> and so regardless of how substantial that lead was, there was no taking the foot off the pedal because our message all as long as we get them down, keep them down. So we had to stay consistent. We'll have some of the players on later on, but Mary Goulding, most outstanding player in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Pretty crazy the evolution of her season. Mm -hmm. What did that added element of her play allow your team to do during that tournament? Well, just, you know, it was more than just actual basketball with Mary. It was leadership as well. And, and you know, her and, and, and Lauren bounced off each other really, really well with their leadership styles. Like, Mary's, you know, more laid back and Lauren's more intense. And so the balance of that, I felt, was outstanding. And just seeing, you know, Mary's a workhorse in, on the court in practice. So just seeing her confidence grow. And, and actually, I was sitting with her yesterday, you know, going over her future and, you know, what she wants to do for playing professionally and thinking – Think about where we were three years ago, you know, and to think about where you are today. And that's a credit to her. I mean, her work ethic, that didn't happen, you know, just, just because Mary wished it. It happened because Mary worked for it. So, I mean, Mary's in the gym all the time, probably too much, where she needs to give her body a rest. But that was definitely a result of all her hard work. Going into the VCU game, championship, one versus two seed, co-810 regular season champs. You're going up against first team all A-10 in Tara Reed. Like I said before, four points, 0 of 4 from the field. What was the game plan and how to, how to execute so perfectly? You know, it really wasn't a specific one necessary geared towards her. We knew she was a really good player, but I think what made VCU a special team was their balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even though it's Terrell was their leading scorer. It wasn't like she was the, the conference leading scorer. She was somebody that, you know, could beat in different ways, you know, because of her size. Um, so really, you know, they really tried to attack us inside that game. And so for us, you know, they jumped out 4 nothing, and, you know, our kids just kind of steadied, you know. And I think to us it was really not let's shut down one player, let's, let's be a team, and let's play great team defense and make them do what we want them to do. Going back to that A-10 title game, how important was that juncture where uh, Mary got out with the two fouls and you were able to sustain that lead and almost give your team that confidence that, look, this is our game to lose? Well, I mean, that was another sign of growth because if you go back to the middle of the season, there was a couple games where Mary or Bree went out with, with foul trouble and we had trouble sustaining the lead. Um, and I, Bree very rarely gets in foul trouble, but I remember distinctly two times Mary got in foul trouble and defensively we took a hit. And part of that was because we had Meg and, 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 and Caitlin who were very young. And so Mary, you know, is an outstanding help defender. And so a lot of it was just the youth of what we were dealing with. And so once we got to the second half of the season, I think the kids will learn to, to kind of play in that situation. Caitlin Downey basically stepped up offensively in the A-10 tournament as well. There was a couple games where she had zero points, but the offense came. How big was that for her to step up? I mean, that was huge, and I think we all saw it in that Syracuse game mm -hmm. where her confidence, I mean, she was, you know, did an outstanding job in that, in that Syracuse game. She, she didn't play like a freshman, and I think that was a result of all the experience she had in the conference tournament, and I think that's a great sign of things to come. Great sign of things to come, and we'll talk about what came after that great performance against VCU. The A-10 celebration, the trip to Syracuse. Looking back, part two. Stay with us. Back on the Ram with Coach Gately, rejoined by Coach for our second Looking Back segment. And Coach, 
you look at these two trophies and what your team was able to accomplish, the final seconds tick off the clock against VCU. You're able to accomplish that mission. You're going to the NCAA tournament. That is something you had done eight times before. What's that initial jubilation like? Wow. I mean, first of all, I get there, and, and my youngest son had surprised me. And like at that, they hit me in the heart because he was there when we won it in 2014. And so when the, I, the seconds ticked off, and I remember at one time I brought the team in. I won't disclose what we said, but brought the team in, and we kind of had a giggle. And I'm like, we're going to do this. You know, like, it, you can't even explain it. It's like an unexplainable moment. I mean, regardless of how old I get, that moment never gets old. You know, it, and, and every team is an individual team. And for that team, nobody on that team had experienced that. For, for those kids to experience it, it's something they'll never forget for the rest of their lives. I walked in after the game was over, confetti was on the court, and you were sitting there with your husband and your son, just, just sitting there soaking all in. What was that moment like? Special, mm -hmm. you know, just sharing the ones you love. I mean, I've always been about faith and family, and that they're the two cores of who I am. So um, just being able to have family there, and, you know, Dutch and DC had obviously chimed in. I knew my mom was watching. I had my sisters there at the tournament and my brothers and everybody watching. So just to be able to share that moment with not just them but the Fordham community, I and mean, we've gotten so many nice emails and feedback from you know, alums and teachers and, and just to embrace this moment, it, it, you know, even, you know, Father McShane at the Founders Dinner the other night had a great shout out. There was 1,100 people there because it, it just brings people together and it's a sense of joy that an accomplishment that the Fordham name is out there. You had built up a double digit cushion so you're able to get Lauren Holden and Bree Cavanaugh and Mary Goulding out of that game. What did you tell them when they initially walked off the court, knowing that they had won an Atlantic? I don't, I, I don't remember exactly <laughs> yeah. what I told them. I mean, some of the stuff you can't say, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just like just so proud of them, you know, and just so happy for them, just so happy for them. And I, my big thing has always been enjoy the moment, you know, like embrace the moment. Like even when we beat the night before we beat Duquesne, like you have to move on so quickly so you really can't embrace it. So it, 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 you had to wait three days to kind of get that culmination of the championship before you could actually take it all in. Fast forward about a week, the selection show in the Rose Hill gym where it all started the whole season. How was it coming together, having family there, friends, fans? How was that experience? Well, it was a little different because ESPN had kind yeah. of... <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I'll let what you say yeah, it. <laughs> it was kind of a little awkward, mm -hmm. but I've always been a believer in make the best of any situation, so we kind of, we weren't going to shut down that award. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people... And it's not had, like you weren't going. You yeah. knew you were going. Yeah, so. and a lot of people canceled their events, and, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't going to do that because we weren't going to let these kids not enjoy their mm -hmm. moment. So we made the, you know, they obviously had their ears closed. They didn't want to know who we were playing. <laughs> I already knew. Um, so I was time happy to prep. With, <laughs> yeah, I was already, yeah, already, already happy with the matchup. By the way, I found that fascinating that none of your players got wind of it. They actually were surprised <laughs> yeah. when they learned the yeah. matchup. Yeah, so I mean, um, I think our assistants did a good job of taking those phones away and making sure that nobody knew what was happening. Well, mm -hmm. moving on to Syracuse, you go to the NCAA tournament. It's cut short in the first round, but a 14 versus 3 matchup. That'll happen often. Syracuse as a whole, how did that venue, the Carrier Dome, how they treated you guys, how did that compare with your other experiences in the tournament? I mean, the people there were fantastic. I mean, it's always a first-class event, you know, and you say 14-3, no, no three has ever lost to a 14 in the women's mm -hmm. side. It's happened a few times on the men's side, but not on the women's side. And that's because the home court advantage is huge. You know, I think that's on a neutral court. That's a different game. Um, but that's what it is in the women's game right now. So um, that experience itself was fa fantastic. It was a first-class event, and everybody did an outstanding job. I mean, um, we didn't play our best game. I mean, we showed in spurts, and we were up at the end. We won two of the four quarters. Unfortunately, the two quarters we lost, we let them get too much of a substantial lead. And, and I think, you know, the, the, you know obviously the, the audience or the fans come into play there, so the crowd definitely is a factor. But... Um, you need to learn how to deal with that before you can actually have success. So I'm hoping that springboards us into something in the future. And having time now is settled about a week out. And for, for the game itself, are you satisfied with how your team played or do you wish you could go back, change something here and there? Not necessarily change things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think our strategy for what we were trying to do was, was right. You know, we didn't shoot the ball particularly well. I think our turnovers hurt us. So it's just things within the game, you know, mm -hmm. there's, you know, they're kids, and it's the first moment in that moment, you know, and you've got to kind of just deal with it, you know, because, you know, you don't know how they're going to react. Same way we didn't know how they're going to react in the championship game against VCU, which I thought we did an outstanding job. But, I mean, again, I don't think we played our best game. I would have been, you know, it would have been better if we did, but that's part of it. You know, it's part of learning that experience and getting there. Tiana Mangakai, uh, five foot six, has an inside game, outside game, almost put a triple-double yeah. up. What makes her so tough? 
all the things you just said, the ability, I mean, the fact that she almost had a triple W tells you that she can do so many things. And like, I'm on the All-American Committee and we just had a call about top point guard. And, you know, it's hard to knock out Sabrina Anescu, who's from Oregon, because she's the returning winner. And I mean, her triple doubles are you know, an NCAA record. So it's hard for Tiana to actually take that award away mm -hmm. from her, but she's not far behind from that. Wanted to get to a couple of uh, player evaluations. We are running out of time on this segment, but we're going to look ahead in our next mm -hmm. segment with Coach. So let's start with Brie Kavanaugh. Uh, full season as a whole, she improves immensely, rebounding-wise from last year, still scores the ball, go-to score on your team. What do you think about Bree's growth this year? I was just talking to Bree yesterday about that. I think she, she grew a lot. I thought there was definitely improvement from her freshman to a sophomore year, and I personally felt she should have been player of the year in the conference. And, you know, um, I just think that there was a lot of great things that she, she did. I mean, she even that stretch where she struggled, I think she got better because of it. I mean, her other areas improved. So I think she definitely took a step forward, and I think there's just more growth for her, and I think she's going to be an outstanding player. Well, we'll get to some of those more player evaluations. We'll shelf it for our uh, <laughs> Looking Ahead segment, and we'll also talk to Brie Kavanaugh, Mary Goulding, Lauren Holden. The players are coming right after this. Time for our lineup segment, joined by three Rams, Mary Goulding, Lauren Holden, Bree Kavanaugh. we got a packed house here. Let's start with the seniors. We were talking about the A-10 tournament with Coach. Final moment, walking off the floor. What was that like? <laughs> we were both crying. Yeah, oh I, was, I was bawling. Yeah. <laughs> I was a baby. <laughs> it was just, like, nice to know that, like, all of the team's hard work had paid off, and um, especially, you know, because it was our last time ever playing him at in that tournament and we were able to win it. So it was definitely like an awesome feeling. Yeah. And speaking of that moment, you went to the bench and all the cameras were on you and they got you on TV for like, I think, like 15, 20 right. seconds. <laughs> You're laughing know about that. Did, you, did anyone uh, call, reach out to yes, you? Yes, <laughs> yes. I found that afterwards. They were like, oh my gosh, you were crying on TV. I was like, <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, I just it just hit me. I didn't, I didn't plan for it or anything. I just stayed on the bench and I was like, holy cow. Like, it's about to happen. I was like, yeah, overwhelmed. Most outstanding player throughout the tournament. Seemed you were on a mission. How were you able to stay in that mental zone from Friday to Sunday? It seemed you were locked in and just ready to take the tournament into your own hands. Yeah, I mean, I think that our team had done everything to prepare us for the tournament. You know, we were ready. Um, I had no doubt in my mind about it. Um, Lauren and I were roommates until we were just, I remember talking about it. We just had no doubt. We were like this, we, we came here for business. Like, we came here to get a trophy. Um, and we're ready for it, and nothing's going to stand in our way. <laughs> Bree, every, everyone talks about the defense for this team, but in the A-10 tournament, the offense really showed up, and especially in that Duquesne game, and you played very well, scoring over 20 points a couple times. How important was the offense clicking at that moment? Well, that Duquesne game, I mean, that was, that was different. I mean, every, like, everyone was, was, at one point, it was like, you know, Lauren shoots a three, makes it. Mary shoots a three, makes it. Then also I shoot a three, make it. Kenny shoots three, <laughs> then, then uh, which one? Caitlin shoots and make. I mean, offensively, like we we were uh, definitely in sync. And um, at one point, I, I just remember like you know end of the the like we we go in for halftime, and I'm just and I'm like how, like how like like how are we up like 49 to you know 16? I was just like this is crazy, but um, I just like you know like Mary said like. You know, throughout the, the tournament, you know, we just had, like, this, you know, this hunger to, to just win each and every single game. And, you know, I think, you know, definitely our hard work throughout preseason and, you know, throughout the whole entire season definitely showed in, in uh, those three games that we played. Speaking of that hunger, 
you dominate Duquesne. After that game, it almost seems like Fordham is a team to beat in the Atlantic 10 tournament. You're about to go to bed before the VCU game. I'm sure there are some jitters. Do you almost know this is our tournament to lose? We're going to win tomorrow. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, we we um, after um, you know beating Duquesne, and you know, obviously, I I, I don't know. I had a hard time sleeping because I was really excited. <laughs> and I was still running on adrenaline. I had a very hard time sleeping, but I remember you know talking to Lauren and talking to a few other teammates, and I'm you know I remember saying like you know like this like we're winning tomorrow. Like there's there's no way we're we're coming home with second place. Like we're we're taking it all, and you know. As eerie as it sounds, you know, I think Sam posted something on Instagram, like uh, an identical score of, you know, the, you know, their their run when they when they won in 2014 versus, you know, our run. Um, our scores were identical. The 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 um, semifinal game. So it's crazy. I was kind of like, all right, like, all right, yeah. you know, maybe this is a repeat. You it know, means or, this is a repeat. Twelve you know? game winning streak. There were so many parallels. It, it, was, it was crazy. So, but um, you know, I couldn't sleep. I'm pretty sure others couldn't sleep because we were just really excited to you know get the championship game going. Go Going into the game against Syracuse in the NCAA tournament, how were your emotions? I know you, we talked to, to you at the selection show. You said you were very excited. You couldn't wait to do it. But for you two, how was it going into that game and then eventually getting there? What was the emotions like? It was exciting. I mean, it was really exciting after, you know, coming off what we did, um, you know, in the tournament and uh, coming off of that, you know, like high feeling and just playing our best basketball going into the tournament. I mean, it was an awesome experience to say that we were, you know, able to do it and um, going into that game. I mean, it was exciting. Yeah, I think it was yeah very exciting. And, and I think what was awesome is that what we even can take away from it now is that, you know, we were competitive. It wasn't, you know, we were there and we deserved to be there. Um, and I think everyone in the team believed, you know, like we, you know, we, we came up short, but we didn't believe that going into that game we were going to lose. Like we knew that we had a chance and we were competitive with them. How was the team after the loss, after that game against Syracuse? Um, I mean, of course we're going to be, you know, anytime you lose, you're going to be gutted, you're going to be upset, but I mean, nothing could take away the fact that, you know, how close our team is and the accomplishments we achieved, you know, so as much as it was, it was heartbreaking that the season had ended, um, you know, we had time in the locker room where we just you know, went around, like had memories and stuff, and it was just really special um, to have a team like this. And I think everyone was kind of ended more on a high as opposed to being like sad about the loss. Now let's go some rapid fire. We're, we're, <laughs> we're going to recap the season. Uh, some of these will be for all three of you, and some of these will be career questions since your guys' time as a Fordham Rams coming to a close now. Favorite trip. Of the season, Mary first, Lauren then Bray. Well, I mean Pittsburgh because we won. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go with Pittsburgh too. You Listen, switch it up? No, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say Pittsburgh. Okay. Say <laughs> it No, right. same. Uh, how about for you two? What's your favorite memory as a Fordham Ram? I know it might be a lot, but can you pick one? I mean, we, we should probably not say winning the championship, right? Because right. that's a given. Yeah, you've got these um, you can say it if you probably, want. Probably, <laughs> probably the foreign tour. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a good one, too. I was going to say, though, like, there's not, like, one particular moment that I, I could, like, pinpoint, but, like, just, like, that feeling of just, like, working hard, so hard in practice with your teammates and then, like, getting that win, like, that you prepared for that game. Like, I just, like, that's such a great feeling, and that's just something, like, you, you won't forget, especially with, like, your teammates. So I'd say that. I agree with Lauren, but I'm going to have to agree with Mary, too. That foreign tour was fun. But I think, you know, with the foreign tour, I think that was the start of, like, all of us really coming together mm -hmm. these past uh, two seasons. Best game of your career, real quick. I, I'm going to think it's Sunday <laughs> against VCU, but best game. Ah, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I, would, I was more thinking maybe, like, maybe Dayton, a home game. I don't know. Or, um, I mean... As a team, I'd say probably Duquesne or or uh, Davidson, like and defensive wise Davidson. Yeah, I mean, games. yeah. There's <laughs> a lot. There's a lot that I could uh, talk about, but I mean, I'd have to go with the when we beat VCU. I mean, like that feeling is just like a feeling that you don't, you, you just like never get. You know, especially yeah. it's just it's awesome. So I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> um, I would agree and say VCU, but also I, I think 
favorite would be Duquesne because everyone was clicking all at the same time, and it was it was a, it was a team effort. So that's going to do it for our player segment, guys. Thanks for joining us all season. Great careers at Fordham, so congratulations on that. We'll bring back Coach to look ahead. Great stuff from the players. Back here with Coach again. Looking ahead <laughs> now. Well, we have the season in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. Next step for this program. You know, you've accomplished a lot already. Two Atlantic 10 titles in five years. You get both this year, hence the two trophies. What's the next step for this program? Enjoy this for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, next year we open with Notre Dame. Um, we were able to put together, through a lot of hard work, um, a, a t tournament with ourselves, Villanova, Seton Hall, mm -hmm. and um, St. Joe's. That'll start at our place next year. We're in conversations right now for a tournament in the Bahamas with potentially playing Ohio State. So uh, aggressive schedule at Penn State, you know, have Houston coming in to our Christmas tournament. So we've gone aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. at, at these kids won challenges and I think last year's out of conference schedule really helped us. How has the recruiting been so far and how are you gonna fill the void of Mary and Lauren? I mean, that's hard. I mean, like anything, like everybody kept saying, how are you gonna replace G? You know, you just, yeah. it, it's just different. You know, it's not like you replace them. You can't replace them. They both brought something so special, and it's just different what you bring in. And uh, we have a good recruiting class, and we're involved with some good kids. So, um, and I think everybody will get better. You know, I think they're all hard workers. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the new challenges. How encouraged are you, not only with the recruits, but the potential growth of players like Zara Jillings, Kendall Haramaya, Caitlin Downey, yeah. and Meg Jonathan in their sophomore seasons as opposed to freshmen? How confident are you in that core that you have moving forward? Well, I thought the kids that were sophomores took jumps from their freshman year. So if they can take the jumps they took from freshman year to sophomore to junior year, I mean, we're in great shape. And if Caitlin can step up, I mean, think about where Mary came from last year. I mean, and, and to go from not even all conference to first team and then, you know, most valuable player, that was a huge jump. So hopefully that's sitting there somewhere with one of our players. I was just going to ask, do you see anyone that can make that jump like Kendall Haramaya did between her freshman and her sophomore year, basically being inserted into the starting lineup and getting significant minutes throughout the season? It's hard to say. I, mm -hmm. I really think, like when I look to this team and think, you know, obviously Bree was a first conference member, mm -hmm. so if I look at somebody that I think can make the jump that Mary made, it would be Kendall, mm -hmm. you know, just because I think she has the potential to do that. But I also think there's a big thing for Caitlin. I mean, if Caitlin continues on what she left off in our Syracuse game, I think she's going to continue to get better. Coach, one more before we let you go. Bree Cavanaugh has made the improvement freshman to sophomore year. Next year, you have to think even better as a junior. Is it crazy to think that she could even get better before her Fordham career? <laughs> yeah, over? I mean, I think Bree's, Bree's hungry to learn, and she's always eager to be the best she can be. So I think for her, I think the future's bright just because we got to give her some rest now. She's had some injuries, as everybody does at the end of the year. So I'm big on postseason being one where you kind of get some relaxation, but the future is extremely bright for Bree. Coach, thanks so much for doing this all season long. Oh, you guys are the best. Thanks. Oh, you guys are the great. best boyfriends ever. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, Coach. Big thanks to Coach Gately as well as our lineup guests, Lauren Holden, Mary Goulding, and Bree Cavanaugh. And a big thanks for tuning in and sticking with us for our inaugural season of the Ram with Coach Gately. The show will return next season to follow the 2019-2020 Rams all season long. Until then, for Dominic Capone, Manuel Barbari, thanks for tuning in. The Ram with Coach Gately has been a production of WFUV Sports in association with Fordham Athletics and BronxNet TV.